Some of you have probably never heard the term IRMA surcharges. I'd be a bit surprised if you have, but if you have, it's probably because you were impacted by them, possibly not knowing you were impacted until you were actually impacted. So these surcharges or IRMA surcharges, simply put, are extra money you pay for Medicare Part B and Part D. So you don't get anything more, but you pay more. I'm Oliver Kolofsky, Director of Wealth Services and Wealth Advisor at Sweet Financial Partners located in Fairmont and Jackson, Minnesota. We specialize in working with high net worth people who are at or nearing retirement. We believe that everyone has the right to realize that their dreams are possible and use that as the focus when working with you and helping you plan for your future. So recently, well, it was the end of, end of last year, I was meeting with a couple and they wanted to do some year-end gifting to their children. It was something like $5,000. So they have two children, wanted to do $2,500 to each child, so $5,000 total. So they needed to withdraw some money from their accounts to accomplish this. So their largest account in terms of dollars uh, are their traditional IRAs. They had other account types, but uh, by a good amount, the largest were their traditional IRA. So naturally, they said, well, hey, can you just send me that $5,000 from the IRA? But again, they also had other account types, had smaller Roth IRAs, and then they had some non-IRA accounts. So had I followed their direction and simply taken the money out of their IRAs, their Medicare costs in 2024, I said that correctly, 2024, more on that later, would have been about $78 per month higher per person. Again, Medicare, the cost of Medicare Part B and D would have been, I'm approximating here, but about $78 per person per month higher. So if we do the math, that's like $1,875. So they would have experienced $1,875 of increased Medicare cost in the form of IRMA surcharges for a $5,000 IRA distribution. That's about 45%. Now, not technically called a tax, but a surcharge acts just the same. So it would have been an extra 45% tax. Thankfully, though, we avoided that. Yep, we did some planning. We avoided that 1875 IRMA surcharge altogether. So let's let's get into what this is and, and, and more on, on it later, how we avoided that. So to make the video as helpful to you as possible, let's define a few items. There's lots of, a lot of acronyms here. So IRMA is an acronym. It's I-R-M-A-A. -A. So that is Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. Let's translate that. If your income is of a certain level, you pay more for Medicare parts B and D. Yeah. So that's IRMA, income related monthly adjustment amount. And I just use the term income. Income can sometimes be a misleading term. What is income? So income is not necessarily the same as cash flow. Income, we're going to look at, or you're going to pull numbers mostly on a tax return. And I, I hope you're ready. Here's another acronym, MAGI, MAGI, which is Modified Adjusted Gross Income. So when we look at it, and I'm not going to get uh, into detail of what that is, but I'll translate it and say, you know, it's, it's basically income on your tax return before most deductions, plus a few items added back. So it's a, it's, a, it's a number derived from mostly from your tax return. And again, if that number is too high, you're subject to the IRMA surcharges, and the IRMA surcharges mean your Medicare Part B and Part D is, uh, is more expensive.
So a few moments ago, I was talking about a couple's 2022 income and how it could impact Medicare costs in 24. So, so there's always a two-year gap between your income and your Medicare costs. So some people call it a look back. You know, if we were in 2024, your Medicare costs are going to be based on 2022 income. Some people use the term a look forward, meaning you look at your income now and, in, well, let's say for the 2022 tax return, we look forward to 2024. We know approximately what your Medicare costs are, are going to be. So, so when I said the term Medicare earlier, a lot of you might think, well, age 65. And age 65 is when I really need to, to worry about this. But again, with the two-year look back or two-year look forward, it's not quite the case. I mean, age 63, look at your tax return when you're 63, and that is going to uh, determine your cost when you're 65. So it's something that has to, you know, planning that, that, that needs to be done before 65. And we'll show a graphic here. So the IRMA surcharges apply on a cliff basis. And you your income is $1 over, the full surcharge will apply. So the example I used earlier when I said, well, you know, if they took out $5,000, it's going to cost them $1,875 of surcharges for that couple. In reality, depending where their income was prior to that distribution, if they would have taken like $1 out of their account, if they were right on the cliff, if you will, that $1 of extra income on the tax return would have caused um, the surcharge $1,875 to apply. There's no phasing in or phasing out here, it's all cliff. So let's look at some numbers here. So what we have here and the concept will apply for any year, uh, but this I'm looking at the 2023 IRMA monthly surcharges and this is going to be based on 2021 MAGI, or Modified Adjusted Gross Income. So for this look, let's look at married filing jointly. If married filing jointly, your MAGI is $194,000 or less, there is no IRMA Part B surcharge, and there is no IRMA Part D surcharge. But if your income is over $194,000, all the way up to 246,000. For part B, there's a surcharge of $65.90. That's per person per month in, in the case of a couple. And the part D surcharge is $12.20 per person per month. You get another threshold from 246 to 306 of income and 306,000 to 366,000. And it goes up from there. So that would be, you can see the surcharges increase. Again, you're not getting anything more or different. You're still getting the same Medicare Part B and D. You're just paying more for it. So let's go back to the couple I met with in December. So again, had, had they taken the $5,000 out of the IRA, you would have put them over the cliff, one of the cliffs. And that would impact their 2024 Medicare costs. So they wouldn't feel the impact right away. I mean, there's like a two-year and a lag time um, in terms of like calendar years. So what was the solution? How, how, how did we, I said we avoided this. How did we avoid this? Well, several ways we could have avoided that. Because if we take $5,000 out of an IRA, that's going to show ordinary income on the tax return. Well, one, we could have waited until 2023. Like they wanted to do some year-end gifting to their children. If they you know, wait a few days and take the distribution in 2023 um, and, and make the gift like in early 2023, that would be one way to do it because the income wouldn't get put on the 2022 tax return. Although that might just be kicking the can down the road and you might end up with a, uh, an issue with your income being too high in 2023. You could take the money out of the Roth IRA. Again, Roth IRA, tax-free forever. If they had a qualified distribution from a Roth IRA, that would do it. They could take a, a basis distribution out of a non-IRA account. So if they had a, like maybe like a joint with rights of survivorship type of account or maybe a revocable trust, 
could take a basis distribution out of that. If they had something that uh, didn't have any unrealized gains on it, that would be a good way to do it. Um, a little more extreme, but it would work. You could do like a home equity line of credit. You could take a little bit of a loan and pay it off the following year. Um, if there were losses in the account, yeah, like 2022, there's you know, a lot of investments went down in value. You do what's called tax loss harvesting. Uh, if they're over age 70 and a half, which they were, and they're giving money to charity, they could do qualified charitable distributions for their charitable giving, which would cause their magi to be less. So several things, a lot of things. So the key here is the controllables. So we can't control the market going up and down. It's going to do what it's going to do, but we can absolutely control things of this nature and you know, avoid this, in this case, $1,875 issue was absolutely uh, avoided. Yeah, kind of like the weather. If we know the weather, I can't control the weather, but if I know it's going to be sunny, I can, you know, have sunglasses on hand, or if I know it's going to snow, I can have my snowblower ready so I can be, uh, you know, proactive there. Yeah. So to learn about more planning opportunities that are most helpful for those ages 55 to 65, you know, click here to watch a presentation I did last summer called Financial planning opportunities for those is those age 55 to 65. So a great name. <laughs>